I love a good coffee cup to remind you of better things because now I've got this. Definitely going to spend some more time uh, in the next couple weeks on the bench. And then the good news is we're off to sunny Florida for Ultimate Scale Trick Expo. So that's going to be amazing. And we can get back outside and um, basically get everything off the bench, which will be great too. The uh, Scale Garage has at least kept me entertained for, um, I don't know, the last couple of months because there's just been way too much snow so uh, let's get into some of the bench projects eh? so this is what I'm working on right now I'm working on this uh, Delta chassis truck here and I took the Marlin body off and I stuck it on to underneath actually the blazer body and uh, and here we are so now we have this colossal mess and what I'm actually doing is taking the these narrower Marlin sliders off. Um, you can see here that they're just a bit more narrow than the body. And this gap right here, of course, has to be filled up with a new 3D print. And uh, this is amazing. Hey, it's done finally. Ooh, awesome. Yes, amazing. So what I'm going to do is build a brand new Delta chassis here and put the blazer bits on it. And then I'll be able to test fit and make sure that all the fenders work. And somebody already asked me this, what about the axle because this is already a uh, left drop so it's a Jeep um, kind of left drop style axle. How are you going to fix that for Chevy so it's a right drop axle? And I actually do care about that. So I actually care about that. So uh, we just finished making a brand new TMX Delta right drop axle and um, the track the uh, top link moves to the opposite side of course the drive shaft and the top link will switch places because they're going to take up each other's, <coughs> each other's space and then we'll have a right drop 44 which will work great for a blazer it's also not a bad swap for the Marlin body so I might actually continue to work with that and um, this might be the first exposure ever of this as well. We have a, um, oh, that's the wrong one. What happened to my leaf chassis? Here it is. That's a C-Max. Uh, this is the Delta left drop Jeep. Uh, but what we did is put leaf springs on the back. Ka-ching! So now we have a Blazer wheelbase that will have a coil over front end and a leaf spring suspension uh, rear end and this is still on a Delta chassis look at how flat that thing is this thing is so flat I might actually cut the entire bed out of the blazer body and drop it three quarters of an inch so I have a full proper blazer bed because this is flat I mean I love that anyway I'm gonna get the chassis built up and uh, put all the 3D printed stuff on it and then we're going to do some test fitting and see what happens with that so stay tuned. Here comes a little fast wrenching action.
So you're probably, probably trying to figure out what all this was about. Uh, basically, my 3D printer is not big enough to print the entire slider in one piece. I have a tiny little 3D printer for testing my parts. So I had to break this file up into two pieces. And then basically what I do is I sanded the joint edges uh, on the paper just to get them nice and flat. You know, just uh, a real simple clean up the edge kind of thing. And then I put them on a piece of tape. So when you glue them together, put the I use this uh, medium CA. I love this stuff. It's and I'm printing ABS, so this stuff really it kind of melts right into the ABS, and you get a really serious permanent bond. And then the reason the tape is here is because the CA doesn't want to stick to the outside of the tape very well. So what happens is I put it on, as you saw. And then I push the two halves together, and then as I'm holding them tight, I kind of move them, I slide them back and forth like this over the tape, because uh, that keeps the, the glue from adhering to the tape. And even if it did, I could just peel it off the table, so that wouldn't matter. But uh, what I end up getting is a really flat glue joint. See that? So the glue joint on the tape side is super flat and there's I don't have to do anything with that and the glue joint on the other side is also super flat the little white stuff here is because I shot the CA with some activator to speed it up here so I didn't have to hold it too long and I just smoothed out the CA with my finger and then shot it with the activator and so this will just get a quick sanding and that'll take the white stuff off of the slider and then I've actually got a a really legit solid one piece you know so my glue joint is actually fantastic I mean these work great I've even used these on on like permanent builds they're amazing this is great for prototyping but it's it it's legit enough for for full size you know full-time building uh, both sides of these are done and now because I also because of the way that I print with my tiny printer I have to add on the um, the attachments here instead of uh, the th the file that you get on Shapeways, which is actually all one piece, I have these. Um, I have to glue on these blocks, which have the body mount holes in the sides. So I'm going to glue those on, get them mounted on the chassis, which is super easy, and then we'll show that off in a minute.
Uh, so this is freaking amazing. Uh, I think I should give you a tour here. Hang on a second. Let me get this thing down here. Okay, first of all, let's just talk about the basics. Uh, inner fenders are in. These are uh, 3D printed variety. It's hard to see black stuff on the video, but hopefully that'll give you an idea. I, uh, for now, I flipped the servo mount around. You can see this here. The servo mount used to be on the inside hole, and so I literally just I rotated it like this, upside down. So now it's in the front. Uh, and what I expect to do is actually replace the servo mount with a new 3D printed part that has the servo mount in it as well as the uh, bumper posts because the blazer has the two bumper posts here and that will uh, give that a whole bunch of strength. So I'm going to try to do that as well to help with the front end mount. Although the inner fenders are so tight inside here that um, there's like the body can't really move left and right at all because it's so tight. You can see an air gap on this one just happens to be the way the curvature goes. Um, but that's it. And there's still room in the front for all of the lighting wiring. You can see here in front of the inner fender, there's still all kinds of room for your LEDs for the signal lamps and the headlights and all that stuff. So um, this motor is from uh, Mr. Comedy. Scale Designs of Mr. Comedy. It's a 454, which is an enormous engine in real life. And it friggin looks fantastic in here, so that just makes me incredibly happy. I like the firewall position, although you'll see in there that the distributor is missing because um, there's not enough room there at the firewall. The, the distributor is like basically right at the... Let's see if I can get this focused in here. Nope. So the distributor is like exactly ahead of that line on the firewall. So I might have to notch the firewall in, which I think is probably more legit anyways. Uh, now, let's go for stance and stuff. I want to show you what's going on here. The inner, This is like at the normal delta ride height right now. Um, it's, at his, it's at the maximum spring height. So there's like not very much droop on it. It's not very heavy actually. So it's with no battery and electronics and it's still kind of sitting up a little bit. But, and the back is the same, okay, so this is on the leaf spring chassis, and you can see here that it's like, it's just sitting right on the top. But this is the cool part. If you go and flex the thing out, like you can pancake the tire pretty much right into the fender well. And to me, that's totally amazing. So I'm actually thinking this would be a sick chassis to use on this truck in a droop setup with uh, like full slam, like I mean you'd end up with a, with a complete slammed like race truck, you know, it'd be amazing. So huge amounts of travel in the back, just crazy. You know, this is the suspension bottomed out right here and it's just, it's just got crazy amounts of, of travel. You can see here, can't wait to get the back mounts all finished up. And uh, I've got the four slots on it now so it's looking fantastic. And this tire is the Wild Peak AT. So this is the uh, very bad view on that side. This is the Falcon Wild Peak AT. It's a 1.5 tire variety. And of course we're using our GCM Mini Mag here on this. So great tire. RC four wheel drive makes this tire. It's narrow too. So you get a really factory looking tire. So, it's amazing. I wanted to show you the inside. I just ripped the body off. Uh, there's what it looks like as far as the, the printed files goes for the floor pan and the inner fenders. Uh, you can see I've got uh, Dion's motor sitting there and it sits, you know, on the can and the, that's where the position of it is in relation to the rest of the, the uh, body work. So the inner fenders, do a complete job. They go all the way around, uh, up right up to the signal markers in the front sides, like I showed you. And then, of course, I've got my uh, dirty printed, home printed uh, side plates here, and uh, I haven't cleaned off the white trim off of the the white fluff off of these yet. But that gives you the idea of what the print looks like. 
So there's already two attachment points here on the chassis that are threaded, so you just run the screws right in there. And uh, that one's a 10, that one's an 8. And if you want, you can put a nut on the back and make them like uh, super locked or if you want. I don't know why you would do that, but this is the cool thing about this. The skid on the side picks up right here at the front. Um, it picks up at the front link right here, right onto the slider. See that? It picks up, we'll use this one. It picks up the link right onto the slider, just smooth. There's no bump there at all. It picks up on the slider and it goes all the way back, straight back to the leaf spring. So you literally have this smooth slide from the front tire all the way to the back tire. It's I friggin' love these. I mean, I just love these to death. These are so great. And they fit all the way back. So you can use the whole thing like as a floor pan, which is what I'm going to do because, of course, on the C-Max, where did I put that one I was using on the Toyota? I think I put it away. Or on the Delta, we have this cover that goes here. Hang on, I'll go get one. This is not trimmed out or anything, but this is uh, this is the 3D printed tunnel cover. And I haven't done any of the trim work inside, so I don't even know how it's going to fit. Usually you have to do a little bit of um, knifing on these. Well, maybe not. So that'll fit right there. Uh, I'm going to have to do some adjustments on the this or the headers because they're both fighting for the same space right now. This, uh, especially the right-hand side header, it's trying very hard to go through the firewall because, as you can see, it fits like right at the back of the motor mount here. So this part is kind of in the way of it. But anyway, that fits right on there like that. That's how this goes. So I've got... Uh, with the exception of working out this motor conflict here on the headers, I've got a complete floor pan, center console, everything ready for the dash. And then the dashboard on the blazer, I'm going to lift up. So there's been lots of discussion about this online. Um, you guys have all seen this already, but there's um, on the inside of the blazer body, there there's these two holes right here on the inside and those two holes are meant to attach the the um, dashboard and the tray that holds the interior bottom here and then the other end of the interior tray gets hooked onto these weird brackets with this space in between don't know why that's there and so a lot of people drill two new holes up top like what you see here there's an extra hole drilled up here you might be able to see it better from this side um, right there so there's an extra hole drilled already and that gets you to lift the dashboard up because when they come the dashboard is actually really low for some reason it's too low in the body so you need to lift it up and fit it into the window where it's actually supposed to be so that's what those two extra holes are for right there for lifting that up and uh, when this thing goes on uh, it just fits, you have to spread these front fenders out quite a bit. So, because it's got such a huge curve on it here, you got to spread these out quite a bit to get it over top of the front inner fenders and you can kind of fish it around the inner fenders like that. And then the um, there's a, a lip on the slider that catches the body here. So right here, there's an edge and the body actually clips into it so the back has already decided it's going to fit in there all by itself so the front will pop in here and then we just push it over the screw holes um, this side is has dropped down below so we'll lift that up plop that over there like this like that and there we go so what we end up with on the bottom is this nice smooth transition here Try to find a way that the light works for you. There we go. So this here has a nice smooth transition on it now. There's actually, the slider comes up to the bottom lip of the body. Right there. It comes right up to the bottom edge of the body. And then the two set screws that we've installed in the sliders, as per the Shapeways instructions, they have the, um, they stick out like about, hmm, they stick out probably seven or eight millimeters 
and they never come through. So even if you wanted to plug these holes on the outside with styrene goo or something, you could do that and leave the middle hole and still have this totally, this body mount would still work perfectly. So I'm not into putting the screws here because I don't feel like wrenching on the trail for any reason. So uh, I don't want to do that. Now what I do intend to do here is, as you can see, there's such an enormous gap here underneath the frame. There's this huge gap in the back. Huge. There's a huge gap because we have a flat frame on the delta all the way to the seats. So there's a gigantic gap. And because it's leaf sprung, there's nothing here in the middle at all above the axle diff. So nothing's there. There's no links. There's no, you know, there's nothing. It's leaf sprung. Even if there was links, there's still a huge hole there. And so I'm going to turn this back section into a body mount, a bumper mount, and a battery tray. And then I'll be able to access the battery from the bottom. So I shouldn't need to get into the cabin at all. And then I have all of my slider space. Pop this off again. Then I have all of my slider space to put my electronics under the seats. I should be able to fit the ESC and the receiver, light controllers, all that stuff, all the way down the sides here underneath the seats, and you'll never see it anyways. So that'll be amazing. And then the engine bay can be just engine bay. You don't have to worry about having, you know, I don't know, wiring or a transmitter receiver or whatever in the front or some kind of controller. You should have lots of room back here. There's a huge amount of space. And uh, that's about it. So that's where I'm at with the Delta Blazer 454 project. Thanks guys for watching the video. Uh, really appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, kind of visit this, visit the uh, build and see what's up. Um, I'm very excited that we can try to get the development of this finished up so we can do the um, mounts on shapeways and all that stuff. We created a Blazer side front axle so that will be available as well and we'll put out a Delta factory built truck and a kit that uses the blazer axle so you can, if you have a Toyota build or a Chevy build you can use the right biased axle um, and uh, sneak peek that's the next one right there we're doing the Tamiya Pajero so uh, Pajero is another one of those tiny wheelbase that matches up with the little samurai that we did originally on the Delta chassis so we're gonna have the mounts up for that very soon too and uh, anyway appreciate you guys watching uh, feel free to share this in your Chevy groups if you want. I don't get to see all the Chevy groups, so for those guys who are trying to build a low-slung, um, easy-to-deal-with chassis that's competition-ready, we've got one here for you for, with the Delta, and uh, the Delta Chevy parts will be all available soon. Cheers. Tiny trucking.